My name is Stephen. Um, so yes, I'm a journalist here in Singapore. I work with CNA. It's a news channel. And I've been doing it for about the past uh, 18 or so years, uh, covering many different things in different areas. Today I work on a program called Talking Point. You guys seen it before? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> you see me do silly things like drink bubble tea, eat fried chicken, eat durians, and all in the name of science. Well, yes. Uh, in a way, I work with a traditional media platform that has had to adapt with all the changes. And over the years, uh, my, this is my car. My car has become a little bit famous because it, it's become a little bit part of my show. You know, it looks look pretty good on the outside. I, admit, I, I, I think it's beautiful. I love, I love driving it. Uh, but what people don't know is that when it rains, it actually leaks. So drip, one drop at a time, it'll be dripping on my foot, you know? And by the end of a 20 minute drive, I basically have a puddle of water. Now you can imagine if I left it out in the rain overnight and it just keeps going on and on, what happens? It builds up, right? And eventually, a puddle, a drop, a puddle, it floods a room at some point in time. That is the power of one single drop of water. It's amplification of that one single drop of water. And guess what? You guys, you guys all have the same power in your hands. How so? With this. Everyone has a phone today, right? With one simple device like this, you have access to the world. You have information at your fingertips. And what can you do with your phone? What do you do with your phone besides calling your friends, sending messages? What else do you look at on your phone? Social media, right? Now imagine one tweet, one post. How many, how many of you have like 500 friends of your Instagram account? Oh, come on, you guys are young people. I'm sure you're more than that. You have a few thousand of these, right? <laughs> but think about it. One post, one tweet, the amplification of that reaches out to so many. So this is, this is the digital butterfly effect. What you're doing has an effect, has an action, causes a reaction, maybe a distraction, but it is amplification. So, in this day and age, anyone, any of us can share our thoughts and opinions, right? I mean, we all post it out there, whether I'm happy or sad, having a nice coffee and a relaxing afternoon. But the question is, how, how accurate, how truthful are these facts? Can they be trusted? Do you actually check when someone posts online and says something about an incident? Do you check? Most of the time we don't. And these views, these perspectives, these facts do shape our worldview. So the amplification also at times makes it seem like it's true. You share it, and then you share it, you share it, you share it. Everyone in school is sharing it. You gotta be true, right? Everyone says it's true. But actually, just because everyone says it or shares it, does it mean it's actually true? What happens is you have something called confirmation bias. When we are in a space where we're no longer seeking out objective facts, because we're in a room, I'm in a room here where all everyone likes to play the piano, for example. Anyone who is not musical won't be in that room. Anyone who doesn't like to play the piano will not be in that room. So think about it on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, you join groups, you join chat rooms, where everyone's talking about the same thing. Do you dare share an opposing view? Probably not, because people will be like, what are you talking about? Imagine going to an environmentally friendly group on Facebook and saying, you guys don't know what you're talking about, this is rubbish. Imagine the backlash she would get. You wouldn't dare do that, right? As a result, you ignore information that challenges your own beliefs. So you are in a, in a room hearing what you want to hear. Everyone is saying what you want to hear and therefore continuing to support your stand on the issue. Which in the first place may not even be true at all. This is what's called an echo chamber. This is that room where everyone is saying the same thing. And therefore, objective views, opposing views do not enter that room. And anyone with a different view will also not enter that room. So you tell me, well, it's online, it must be true. I can find a website to support, I can find research papers. You know what? This is a quote I found. You can find anything you want on the internet and some of it is even true. So, Googling it and saying I have five websites that support my point of view is not really 
the most proper research you can do. Because anybody can put up a website to say what they want to say. Okay, so, so this is just a, a sense of how amplified it can be, right? I mean, I have an Instagram account, I have a few thousand followers, you know, and if I'm successful, I'll go up tonight and maybe I'll find a few more new followers. <laughs> if I'm not, then I'll know. But look at these guys. We all know these names, right? Can you imagine how many people they can reach out to with just one post? 600 million, what's the population of Singapore? Like five, six at most. <laughs> how many Singapores is he reaching out to? How much of the world are they reaching out to with just one single post? So these guys have serious amplification of their messages. Now, the question is, they often get paid to make these posts, right? Which also means, if you're paying for a post, are you truly unbiased in what you're posting? Because I'm gonna say if Adidas is paying me you know, a bunch of money to say this brand new pair of soccer boots are the best, what else am I gonna say? Okay, so now, yeah, guess. How much does Ronaldo get paid per post? Shut it up, give me a ballpark number. Two mil. <laughs> Two mil, five mil? Ten mil. Ten mil, okay, now that was good. You guys are pretty close. Pay a hundred thousand dollars, even on a good day, a really good ad that goes viral in Singapore. What, you hit maybe two, three million of the population? Bam, one time, one post, he's hit over 600 million people. Selena Gomez, 430 million, Dwayne, so these people can seriously amplify any kind of message out there. But it comes with a price. Which also means it isn't always factual. The information they're sharing may not be accurate. What if what if Ronaldo told you, okay, you want to be a professional football player, quit school, come join the Nike Football Academy. Some boys and girls will probably actually really quit school and go join the academy. Is that the best thing to do? Right? So, his actions have consequences. Selena Gomez, imagine if during the pandemic, she said, the vaccines don't work, don't take them. A bunch of people, like imagine Taylor Swift doing it, all the Swifties who have gone, yeah, okay, we're not taking it. <laughs> people have, the consequence, more people would have died. Right? So if you think about it, the power in their hands, in your hands, amplified because of the digital tools that we have today. And all their actions have consequences. If they're not checked, if no one calls them out, they can turn the untruths into what seems like the truth. Again, she puts out a message, all her fans share it, everyone's talking about it, everyone's saying, Taylor must be right. Because she's like the coolest kid in town. And why would she lie to us? An untruth becomes a truth. And the more you share it, the more you start believing that it is true. I mean like, uh, maybe you guys are too young, but I, I get it from my mom, you know, a lot of times I get a WhatsApp message saying, oh, uh, ginger can help cure cancer. Eat five cloves of, you know, drink hot water with ginger mixed with lemon. For the longest time, these have always gone around. But now, we have the tools to amplify those in an even greater way. But it also means the consequences are much greater. And there is a gray area. Because after a while, you can no longer tell which is fact and which is fiction. And why can't you tell? Because there are also deep fakes around. You can go online, look up a video. I can get the Prime Minister, make a video of him saying things he never said. Can you tell by watching it? I can't tell. I've seen clips of Barack Obama saying things which are quite unlike him. They were deep fakes. You can get a call from your mom saying, Hey, I need some money for this. It's not her. 
sounds like that. So all that is happening now, here and now, in this era, which makes it increasingly hard to tell the difference between the two. So yes, with great power comes great responsibility. I mean, it's a great term that you know, Spider-Man came up with, but it's true. Uh, you think you don't have power, but because we all have this, we actually have so much power in our hands. And every time you do something online, it does have consequences. And that also depends on how, I mean, uh, sometimes it's, it's got to do with how you see the world. And our perspective of things is very important. You know, um, think of a train in a railway track going to a tunnel. A pessimist sees a dark tunnel. An optimist sees a light at the end of the tunnel. A realist sees a train on the train tracks. The train driver, he sees three idiots standing on the railway tracks. <laughs> so, I'm just here to share with you today that uh, I guess in, in my role as a communicator, I'm, I'm here to help people understand what's going on in the world. So my words do have consequences. They do have, they, they do get amplified. People will sometimes share the videos, share the information, and that's why there is a big onus on us to, to be sure that what we're sending out there is, is truthful, is accurate, is factual. Because it can have very serious consequences. Sometimes if you say something, when you're angry, you put a post, you say harsh words, mean words, you lose a friendship. Maybe a protest occurs somewhere in the world, where still a riot takes place, people die. All because somebody said something somewhere along the way. So you see, our actions really do have consequences. You know, this is the domino effect, right? If now all of you squash together, you push one, the other guy's gonna fall, the other guy, and so on and so forth. So again, a simple thing, a simple little nudge can actually also have an effect on so many things. It's just that we don't think about it. So that one time you say to your friend, ah, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about. That friend goes home and thinks about it. Is upset for a few days because you call him stupid. Is hurt. And after a while, the friendship fades. You've lost a friend because of one thing you said in the heat of the moment without quite thinking. So as I wrap up, I'm just going to share this that, yeah, basically our actions have consequences. So the next time you want to repost, reshare, write an angry, you know, uh, post in your Instagram message, say something mean to somebody just because at the moment you're like, ah, oh! just tell yourself, okay, take a moment, think about it. Ask yourself, if I do this, what could happen? What could happen? I'm an old school kind of guy, when I put anything or I post anything, I think about this all the time. Well, for one, I could lose my job if I don't you know, do it right, but because I realize that my actions have consequences. So, that's my encouragement to you. Use your social media, please, by all means. It, has, it is such a powerful tool, it can do so much good, but just remember that every time you want to put something out there, your posts, your actions, your words have consequences because everything is amplified many times more when it's on the social media. Okay, that's it. Thanks, guys.